There's too much conflict within the workplace and everyone knows that the, that the primary issue is that of personalities. We have an idea and we as a team want to get it over to solution. In between those, you have some steps that we need to take in order to get an idea to solution. The first phase is that of the problem where we discuss what the issue is and what we need to resolve. Then the details of how we're going to resolve this problem. Then the third phase is asking the question of how are we going to fix this problem. Then the fourth phase of problem solving is that of promoting, making sure that everyone was well notified to make sure that we can get this with enough buy-in so that it's successful. The fifth phase is that of the actual decision and then of course the implementation. Now if it was easy for all of us to stay on the same phase at the same time, we'd be more successful. But what usually happens is the D personality thinks of a problem that needs to be resolved and they quickly move over to decision. They skip over the details of it how we're going to fix it, and whether we need to involve other people. They just want to basically say, hey guys, we need to fix the servers, we need it done next week, and we need to make this decision, let's move on it. The others kind of pause, and after either an awkward moment in the meeting, or some stares, or some emails not being responded, eventually somebody begins to ask questions, and that somebody is the S personality. The S personality moves over into asking questions about how. How are we gonna do this? Are we gonna buy servers, or are we gonna outsource these servers? Or are we going to do this for all the remote offices? The dominant personality doesn't really like all that questioning because they view it as being negative. Now, the S personality, they're saying, no, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just asking questions for clarification. But the dominant personality can tell that the S personality is kind of raining on the parade. There's now awkwardness and some kind of tension until the I personality steps in, but they're asking more questions about, hey, what do you think? What do you think? They, they want to pull the team because the I personality is more focused on making sure that we're working together. So they contribute or try to contribute to the conversation by making sure that we're all on the same page. However, the dominant personality can tell that, wait a minute, we're still taking a lot of time and we have not gotten to decision. You know what? Enough. We're going to do this. I've waited long enough. I've asked questions. We're going to do this. Everybody kind of realizes, oh, great. Fine. We're going to do this. Then that's where the I personality steps in and they say, well, hey, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's a great idea. But notice where the S is. The S is still trying to figure out, wait a minute, how are we going to do this? Who hasn't even contributed one bit? Okay, It's the C personality. The folks that are very detail-oriented, they haven't spoken up. No one's asked them. They're looking for data. No one's really focusing on data. And so they're going to hold out over here on the detail side. We are never on the same page. We all have our preferred style. We all have our preferred focus. We have to go through all the faces, but we have to go through all the faces at the same time. So let's slow this down a little bit and let's talk about the personalities and what ticks them, what makes them drive so we can better understand how to fix this problem and make better decisions together. The first personality to look at is the dominant personality, all right? The second personality to look at is the influential. Then we take a look at the S, the, the steady personality, and then the C, the conscientious one. Each one of the personalities is very confident that their approach is the right approach. And this is where conflict comes in. Everyone is usually disagreeing about the approach rather than the actual issue. The dominant is the kind of personality that wants things to be done fast. They talk fast, they think fast, they speak fast, they want to be approached in a fast manner. The influential, they agree that things should be done fast. However, they would rather emphasize the issue of friendliness. Now, the S's agree with the I's that things should be friendly, but they tend to want to balance the I's by saying, yeah, we agree that things should be friendly, but we believe that it should be more calm. It should be a friendly and calm approach. Now, the C's, they agree with the S's that, the, that things should be calm, but if we're going to have a conversation, I'd rather focus 
on things that are detailed. We want to see data. This approach for every one of these personalities is their preferred style. And if things are not handled this way, they're going to push back or they're going to disconnect. So let's delve a little bit more into this and let's figure this out. All right, a couple things to understand. All of us have each one of these elements in ourselves. However, all of us really have one style that's the most natural to us. So this one style is called our natural style. It's what we are when we're not even thinking about it. Whenever you're being yourself uh, in your happiest mood or in your most comfortable state, that's your natural state. So for example, if you're a dominant personality, well then you want to see th things done fast at the expense of everything else. If you're an I personality, you want to see things done with friendliness and enthusiasm at the expense of everything else. If you're an S personality, likewise, you want to see things calm above everything else. And if you're a C personality, you want to see things detailed above everything else. Now, all of us don't normally stay in our natural behavior because through the years we've also learned that we, if we push too much our style and our approach, it doesn't work. So we need to adapt to others. And over the years, most of us have learned to adapt another style. So for the most part, all of us like to have two styles, our natural style and an adaptive style. So look at the screen and let me show you what this looks like. The dominant individuals, they normally have another style that's either going to be the, at, the I style or the C style. The same is true for the influentials. If you're an influential person, notice on the screen, you'll see that influentials, they tend to be influentials who are dominant or influentials who are steady. The S's, they normally have an adaptive style that's going to be either SI or SC. And then the C's, they're going to have an adaptive style that which is going to be CS or CD. All of us tend to have two of these behaviors and we tend to shy away from the other behaviors and we don't like their approach. So what's the key? The key is to learn how to practice these behaviors when we are around other people who are not like us. If you're a dominant individual and you're approaching or you're in a conversation with an individual that's of an I personality, the dominant individual needs to practice that conversation in more of a friendly manner. The I personality also needs to do their part and they need to lower their friendliness and get more to the point, be more direct and talk faster. Well, let's look at it in another scenario. Let's say, for example, you are an I personality and you're having conversations with the C personality. Well, the I personality needs to drop down. Here, let me practice it for you. I'm a very high I personality. I'm gonna tone this down a little bit and I'm gonna talk in a much calmer, detailed fashion. The I personality needs to practice doing this and approaching the, the conscientious, detailed individual in a much calmer approach. And the C needs to step it up a little bit and first of all, say things like, hey, how you doing? How, you, how was your weekend? Be friendly, show a smile. Well, when you connect at a more human level, at the personality level, level it's a whole lot easier to make decisions together. So, let's look at some examples. Discover and other credit card companies have captured this concept and have made some really good commercials. Let's look at how the client calls in and how the customer service individual adjusts to match the person is calling in. Let's take a look at the dominant individual. Discover card. I want to ask you a couple of questions. I've got nothing to hide. My bill is due today and I haven't paid yet. Is that a confession? Have I committed a crime? Nope. Actually, with our new card, you can pay up till midnight online or by phone the day it's due. Hmm, sounds convenient. How do I know you're telling the truth? Because I work for Discover Card. Got a witness to verify that? Just you. You called me. Okay, that checks out. You recording this? Yes, I am. Good, so am I. I would like a copy. Copy that. Copy that. Copy that. It was a very fast back and forth, extremely high banter, very quick uh, interaction. The dominants, they are very comfortable talking very directly with people and they want other people to talk very directly to them. Now notice, all of you who are not these individuals, we tend to shy away from being so direct with the D's because to us, their directness is rough and sometimes rude. So we don't want to be that rude. So we tend to shy away from the D's, but the D's want us, as a matter of fact, they need for us to be much more direct, 
to the point, not beat around the bush. So let's take a look at the example of the I gregarious caller. Discover card, how can I help you? Oh, uh, you're real? You know I'm real. At Discover, we're always here to talk. Well, that's good. Because I don't have time for machines. Some companies just don't appreciate the power of conversation. Real people. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm calling the land of machines. And with their robot voices. Oh, I don't like those machines. Oh. How, now, how can I help you? Oh. <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> so you notice in the I personality, they got off into a story and even laughed together, but, that, but they were connecting. So they could look at the steady approach. So Ally Bank really has no hidden fees on savings accounts? That's right, no hidden fees. It's just that I'm worried about, you know, hidden things. Okay, why's that? Well, uh... Surprise! <laughs> uh... Well, it's true. At Ally, there are no hidden fees. Not one. That's nice. All right, you notice that the caller was extremely calm and the person that answered the phone was likewise calm. Let's take a look at the C style. Discover card. Hey there, I just got my bill and I see that it includes my FICO credit score. Yep, you get it free each month to help you avoid surprises with your credit. Good. I hate surprises. <laughs> Surprise! The individual started talking about details and what did the customer service person respond? Details. So whenever you can spot that a C individual is approaching you and they're wanting to talk with you, become more analytical. They'll appreciate that and you'll notice how the conversation goes a lot further. This may seem difficult for you. Of course it is because this takes practice. However, I want to encourage you, you can do this. All it takes is practice, mastering the basics, and together we can win in the workplace. And for now, all I have to say is thank you very much.